Hi, so today I'm going to show you how to do a test on soil integrity. What do we mean by soil integrity? Soil structure. If we spoil the soil structure, we tend to end up with soils that are easily erodible, impacted on rain, impacted with floods. So it's really important that we try to make sure that the soil structure stays intact. These are Coca-Cola bottles that have been cut, two litre Coca-Cola bottles have been cut. A little piece of shade net has been put on the top of each one with a rubber band acting as a kichungi. You can actually even use a tea kichungi, the size it will fit in there. And the um, the kichungi must be submerged, the bottom part submerged in the water. Then I have two sticks, just ordinary kijitis from the shamba. You can all, you've all got two sticks. And I've got two soil samples. One, a soil sample that has not been disrupted. A soil sample that has not, that has come from a long-term um, growing place. In this case, this is my lawn um, and it shows that the soil has not been disrupted for a very long time. The integrity, um, you can see it as it's hanging there, all these little bits hanging on, the need for, you know, the, the way the roots are coming in. And as we know, those roots are all bringing in the um, liquid carbon and the sugars that are feeding the microorganisms in the plant that are forming that glue. Then I have another sample of soil that was taken from a recently um, plowed piece of land. Um, that has got some skuma wiki and things growing in it. So this would more likely be your classic sample from maybe even your plus ones chamber. What we're going to do now is we're going to put a sample of soil in each of these bottles and then we're going to watch what happens when they're submerged in water. We are um, simulating what would happen maybe in rains, light rains, heavy rains, maybe even floods. And we'll see what begins to happen to the soil structure. And that will give us the impression of what we need to do to ensure that we try to maintain the best soil structure we can. So we're going to take a small piece of this soil from Shamba. There we go. We've got a small piece of that. And uh, we will put it here in this pot here on the my right and another piece from say here which is now a clod from soil from under the grass and we will take that and we will put it in the second pot as you saw immediately as I put them both in, there was a little bit of release of soil from both samples. As they begin to absorb the water, we start to see what happens to the actual soil structure. As we see from these two samples, if we go in close, this sample here is the one that was from under the grass and this one from the shamba. They're both absorbing water as they soak in the water. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the two sticks and we're going to tap these jars to see what begins to happen to the soil in the two samples. And you can see that the soil on the left is disintegrating and disintegrating much quicker than the soil on the right, which seems to have be maintaining its integrity. What this example is showing is exactly what begins to happen. We can stop banging for now, but this is what begins to happen when we plow our fields, we dig our fields, we disrupt the microorganisms, the mycorrhizal fungi from doing their work, the glomalin from forming. We go and we turn the soils, we break the soils, we expose the soils to the sun, we add synthetic fertilizers which affect the uh, the microorganisms maybe even the acidity of the soil and our soil structure begins to be compromised we'll continue banging a little bit more now and we'll see that with time this the problem with the soil becomes 
even more dramatic. This is why during the heavy rains you see red rivers, you see red dams, you see red lakes. And it's also why most people who live in the valleys have a better production system because they receive all the soil and the nutrients from the soils from those upstream who've been disrupting their soils. I'm now going to try to pick up these soil samples and uh, we'll see what happens as I try to pick them up. So this is the soil from the grass. It seems to still have all of its integrity. You can see those little rooty bits are all in there. It hasn't fallen to pieces even though there are pieces hanging and dangling on it. It still, still seems to be fine. If we look at the residue in the bottom of the bottle and even in the kichungi there's not a lot. If we look down in the bottle there's not a, not a lot. We're now going to look at the soil sample in the second one. This was now soil taken from a newly prepared shamba and we can see as we try to pick it up it begins to disintegrate. Um, I will just put that back there. I won't even try to pick it all up um, but we will also see that a lot of it has just come down to the bottom. And what tends to happen then is those air pockets that have been made by microorganisms, by roots or that are trying to be made in poor soils they then collapse with water and you begin to get very hard compacted soils that are almost impossible for roots to go through. And that's why it's very important that we work towards creating soil integrity through understanding the microbes by understanding our actions on soils and ultimately by understanding the precious, precious um, new finding that we've just come across called glomalin which is the binding agent of our soils that keep our soil structure intact. I'm back. So, what have you learned today? We've learned about soil structure that's dependent on microbes, that's dependent on mycorrhizal fungi um, that take the soil sugars from the plant roots and make glomalin and give us that integrity and that soil structure. Plus, um, we've learned that once you have compromised your soil integrity, you have actually created a situation where you're going to lose your soil, where you're going to lose all the hard work that you actually put in was disrupted. That is degenerative in nature. By leaving soils and building from, from the top, putting your matter on the top, whether it's organic matter in terms of composting or letting the plants bring down those sugars themselves by keeping your soils covered, you are regenerating your soils. So we can see very clearly here, degenerative soil and regenerated soil. I'd like you to do this experiment with your plus ones um, and to take a video and send us a video. And then whilst doing the experiment, ask, ask your plus one, what do they think? What are their reactions? What have they learned and what do they need to do differently in their production systems? Once that understanding is there that things need to be done differently, then it's a lot easier for us to teach the next steps, which are how do we work towards regenerating our soils? Because this is what we've been taught to do. And this is what we have been doing for years. And this is why our oceans in some areas after heavy rains are completely brown um, because of the silt, the soils, the topsoils that are all being washed down into the oceans through the rivers. Looking forward to your videos. Till next time. Bye bye.